Good day, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on security-related awareness and training. Today I'm going to discuss the security policy, and then we're going to conclude with some security awareness topics. There's a fair amount of ground to cover, so let's go ahead and begin today's session. Let's jump into our first topic, the security policy. A security policy is actually composed of many sub-documents that cover the expected behavior of personnel from a security perspective. It is created by personnel that is tasked with securing company assets, but it also has the backing of management. Without that management backing, it would be difficult to enforce a security policy at least evenly. All personnel should be required to be trained on the security policy and then acknowledge such training with a signature. That signed document needs to be kept in their personnel files at all times. The individual sub-policies contained within the security policy will not only detail the expected behavior, but will also outline the disciplinary actions that can or will be taken if the policy is violated. Disciplinary actions can range from a simple verbal reprimand to termination or prosecution. When devising your training on security policies, there are a couple of things to keep in mind. The first thing to keep in mind is the role that the person that you're training occupies. This is called role-based training. When training on individual security policies, it is important to craft the training to fit the intended users. The different users have different training needs. Your general user just needs to know the what of the policy. What do they need to comply with? What does it take to comply? The technical user needs to know the how in the what. For the how, they need to know how that policy is going to be put in place and how they need to help enforce it. For management, management needs to know the why of the policy. They really don't care about the how or the what, but they need to know the why. Why are we putting this policy into place? All security policy training is vital. It helps to ensure compliance with regulations like the PCI DSS standard or with HIPAA standards. Security policy training also helps to ensure that security best practices are followed, thus protecting the organization from threats. This policy training also helps to ensure that internal standards are adhered to. Another thing to remember is that the threat environment is not static, and that means that neither should the security policy. The security policy should be changed to adjust for new threats and trends as needed. And once it's updated, the training cycle needs to start again. There are different types of training and different environments in which that training can be done. Different types of training can and should be employed to help ensure consistent awareness and compliance with the security policies. These different types and environments can also be used as refresher courses on the security policy. The most basic is the printed document. This can be used as part of the initial training after hiring as it is easily tracked with a signed copy being on file. Then there's computer-based training or CBT. This uses IT media to provide the training and it also allows for an interactive experience with the added benefit of also being easy to track. Then there are seminars. These are usually half-day or full-day security policy seminars, which can be used to impart knowledge to large groups at one time. Then there are working lunches. They're similar to a seminar, but usually they will only cover a single topic. And finally, there's informal training. Security personnel should always be striving to help users and management understand the importance of the security policy. All training should be documented and tracked with the exception of informal training. And the reason for this is the documentation can be tracked and measured. Let's conclude with some security awareness topics. Most users take a fairly casual approach to IT security, even when they don't think that they do. Social networks are actually a security risk. It is all too easy for a user to share information on a social network 
that shouldn't be out in the wild. Sometimes the sharing is intentional and they don't realize that they're sharing sensitive information. Then there are peer-to-peer -peer type networks. These also represent a security risk. Just like social networks, a user may make information that should be kept in-house available on a peer-to-peer -peer network. P2P networks are also vulnerable to security exploits and have been used as threat vectors in the past to introduce malware into other networks. All data and files should be classified as to their level of sensitivity. This is also called data labeling. In most cases, organizations are responsible for establishing the level of classification, as in top secret, secret, public, or private, but it's up to the organization normally. An exception to that would be if they had a contract with a governmental agency. After all data and files have received their classification, users should be assigned to levels of access. That is their clearance level. Personally identifiable information is our next topic. Personally identifiable information is any information that can be used to uniquely identify an individual, as in their social security number or possibly their driver's license number. PII should always receive the highest level of classification and restrictions. Personally identifiable information is highly sensitive, and as such, it should never leave the control of the organization. Then we have data handling and disposal. Policies should be put in place that specifically outline data handling and disposal methods. These policies should outline how data can be stored and the appropriate method of disposal, both for electronic data and physical data. If data is allowed to be placed on removable media, as in a USB flash drive, it should always be encrypted. That way, if the flash drive gets lost, the data is still secure. Hard drives can be sanitized by using overwrite software, or they may be physically destroyed. And if you're going to require physical destruction, I recommend contracting with a shredding company. And finally, we have user habits. It is up to security personnel to instill strong security habits into other personnel within the organizations. Items that should be focused on include creating strong passwords and good password management techniques, proper data handling techniques, clean desk techniques, physical security of the personnel, and finally, the company's policies on personally owned devices in the workplace. Now that concludes this session on security related awareness and training. I talked about the security policy and then we concluded with some security awareness topics. On behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I hope to do another one soon.